Welcome to this bar core series. So go ahead, if you have a ball, grab a ball. The only reason my weights are here is if I ever decide to set it to the side, I have somewhere to push it, put it, but I'm not using them. Just the ball, and if you don't have that, you can roll up a hand towel, use a balloon, a kid's ball, or nothing at all, and you can still do all of this. So go ahead and bring yourself all the way down on your mat. Go ahead and lengthen your legs out, and just be sure for me that um, you're centered on your mat. Leaving the ball over to the side for just a second. Just inhale the arms up overhead. Long stretch. Exhale them down by your side. One more time like that. Super deep inhale. And exhale. Go ahead and grab that ball for me. Walking your feet in and lifting your hips up so that you're sitting down on that ball. Lift one knee and then the other knee. You're welcome to keep your knees bent. But if you're comfortable straightening your legs, go ahead and straighten them for me. I want you to open your arms today out into a little football goal post to make you a little bit unstable. If you're like, nope, unstable enough without that, feel free to leave your hands right here or just open them to a T on the floor. You don't have to do this. But if you want to play with this, back of the hands on the floor, uh, elbows on the floor and like a little football goal post right out from your shoulders. Now start to drop your feet over to one side just far enough that you get that little squeeze in the abdominal and come back to center and drop to the other side and come back to center. So the goal here is just to get that abdominal wall really warming up and just moving until you feel that little squeeze and center. Little squeeze and back to center. Keep that move. It's not very fast and it's really, really, really controlled. So as you're doing this, whether your hips are on the ball or not, or on a slightly lifted on a towel or something. I want you to feel like your lower back and your belly button are being pressed in and down towards the floor. So instead of arching up to compensate and working against your abs, I want you to kind of scoop them in and make them tight. That feeling of like a high school boy saying, hey, punch me in the abs, and you make your wall really tight so if somebody hit it, you didn't get hurt. And back to center. Just give me one more to each side, a little lean and center. So that should be enough right there just to help you sort of get those warmed up. Go ahead and move that ball or whatever marker you're using to your calves for me and squeeze really tight. Now start to push your feet away from you just enough that if you push down on that abdominal wall, it would be really tight for me. Keep those arms in that football goal post and give me the same little drop to the side. So this time with your hips on the mat. So if your hips were already on the mat, I want you to imagine that you just put a heavy weighted ball in between your calves. So you're squeezing your legs towards each other without touching. And you're holding on to something super heavy as you give me that little lean. If you'll really think about that, you'll really feel the change in the work just a little bit in that abdominal wall as you're going. Good. Just give me a couple more side to side. Maybe do that little kegel, that internal tightening for me that I'm on a road trip and the next bathroom is 300 miles away. So I'm giving that super squeeze. And drop to the side. And center. Just shift the weight over the other side. Give me one more in each direction. So again, it's a really small move and it's not fast but it should be enough that your abdominal wall is starting to get really tight, warm. Shift your hips up and drop them right down and then add that in. So give me a little tick-tock side, hip lift, switch, tick-tock to the other side, and hip lift. So it used to be that if you said tick-tock, you thought of like a clock and a little pendulum that would drop to the side and your hips would lift and now you probably imagine that somebody's making a really short video of you <laughs> if you say that. Drop to the side and hip lift. Drop to the side and hip lift. So in your abdominal wall, you have all these different strains of muscles that are working in towards each other between your rectus abdominis and your transverse abdominis. And so you're just trying to work your abdominals in different directions so that you're getting all of those different muscle groups engaged and 
really working for you. So the whole goal is that pretty much everything is starting to fire up in there and it's getting super warm for you. And lift wherever you are. Go ahead and give me one more little tick tock and lift. Now, whenever I add on, always remember, you can come back to one of these base moves and just drop side to side, or you can start to bend your knees and kind of reverse crunch in if that's working better for your body. But if you like, we're going to go into rainbows, keeping those arms out. Drop towards the bottom corner of your mat. So you really have a lot of weight on one hip. One hip's kind of lifted. Bring it up and lift those hips. Drop to the other side of the mat. I might hit the doors here. And lift the hips. So a little side drop. And hip lift. Side drop. And hip lift. So do me a favor. I'm going to move away from the doors real quick. Do me a favor and do this in a way that is so slow and really controlled and isn't just sort of throwing your legs around. If we start to throw them around, it becomes momentum more than muscle. And then we're sort of cheating ourselves out of some of the work that we could be doing and some of the muscle building that we could be creating. So, well, not creating, you already have the muscles. But you get the gist of the idea. Drop and a little bitty hip lift. I think there's a point where my blood sugar gets low enough that I just don't make sense anymore. Last one to each side. Hip lift. Drop. Nice little hip lift. And then bring those feet all the way down to the floor. Take the ball, place it between your thighs if you're using it, which remember, you don't have to be. Stack your hands behind your head. Now, whenever we do what we consider a basic crunch, we tend to pull on our neck and kind of crunch our chin in. And then we tend to push our belly button out and we're really working against ourselves, especially for women who have had children because you can have diastasis and different issues of separation through here. So you really don't want to do that. So feel like somebody's pushing your belly button and lower back down. You're almost tucking your hips under and lifting, but leave them flat on the floor. Good. And then feel like there's a string right here on your chest, and you're just going to make your shoulder blades light on the mat and set it back down. Light on the mat. So it's the general idea of a crunch. But keep your gaze for me right up here. Keep your airway open like there's a little orange between your chin and your chest. And make the lift feel like it's more right here through the shoulders. Like you just sort of lift up and set it back down. And then instead of throwing it, so don't feel like there's this move, but there's a super gentle lift and a super gentle set it down. Just give me four like that. Three, pull the belly button down towards the floor. Keep that kegel squeeze and that tightening. Make your bottom light. Don't start to arch your back. Now just make your shoulder blades kind of light, but they're still touching the mat. And rock side to side like you're going to rock one elbow towards the ceiling and the other. So just kind of rock and roll through the shoulder blades. And now really give me the focus on your belly button. Pull it towards your spine. Press your lower back towards the floor. Keep your breathing nice and even. And if you feel like you can, give me a little squeeze in your thighs on that ball and press the bottoms of your feet into the floor. See if you can't make that a little bit tighter down there for four, three, squeeze the belly button in, do the kegel squeeze, last one, and lower down, good, you can repeat that with the feet on the floor, or you can lift your legs up, and again, push them away just enough that you start to feel like little steel bands are down here, and everything has gotten really tight, give me that little bitty lift, and lower, so just think about going to the ceiling and not as much curling in. 
lift. Each time you go up, feel like your hips get lighter and your lower back gets heavier towards the floor. So it's like as your shoulder blades lift, your belly button sinks. You're a little piece of paper just sort of folding in half. Two more like that. Hold this one up. Good. This time the twist is side to side. So it's like you're staying parallel with the floor and you would just be sort of sliding along it if you were down on the floor. But you're trying to kind of stay up on your shoulder blades. So reach the elbow towards the hip and the other hip. Slide side to side. You have four little sets like that. So hopefully this whole abdominal wall is starting to get nice and warm for me. You have a lot of muscle groups firing in there. Two. One. Good. Lowering your head and shoulders if you need. Otherwise, place those hands together like you're diving into a swimming pool and just pulse on the outside of one hip. Six. Five. Four. Squeeze the ball. Push the legs away from you. Get tighten your abs and switch sides. Eight. Seven. Six. Not too many of these. Three. Two. And one, knees in. Nice job. Go ahead and place your feet down on the floor. For our bridge, we very typically place our hands right here on the floor and we just kind of lift up, pushing our hands in. Today, I would love it if you would stack your hands behind your head. Not necessary, but if you're willing to play with me, go ahead and do that. Squeeze that ball nice and tight. Walk your feet in nice and close. Tuck your hips under and feel like you're peeling your back up one little vertebrae at a time, like your spine's a little string of pearls as you come up towards the ceiling. And then same thing going down, really tuck those hips under and see if you can't get your lower back to touch before your hips and your bottom come back down to the floor. So rolling all the way up into bridge and all the way back down. Just two more like that, squeeze that ball if you don't have the ball, push your big toes into the floor and feel like there's sort of a magnetic pull between your knees. They're not going to touch, but they are going to stay straight up with your kneecaps up towards the ceiling and not sort of dropping up into the side. And roll that down. Good. This time roll up. And a little bit, you're going to take one hip and just kind of pop it to the side. And then the other hip, lift it a little bit higher. Switch. Alternating sides. Lift and lift. So think about the back of one leg giving sort of a super squeeze and drive that heel and big toe super heavy into the floor as you start to lift that hip. One side, other side. You have three little sets like that. Each side gets its little chance to sort of lift extra at the top. One more. And then right there in the center, straight lifts, just little pulses. Think about your entire foot being driven into the floor. So big toe and pinky toe are pushing in. Your heel is pressing in. Your inner thighs are squeezing towards each other. And you're squeezing with the back of those legs. Four, three. Now just like we did that hip lift side to side, you're going to do a hip drop side to side. So it's like you're going to tap one hip, come back to center, tap the other hip, come back to center. So it alternates sides each time. And it's sort of the bottom half instead of the top pulse. Little tap and lift. Now, if you do have the ball between your thighs, keep a really super squeeze. So you're kind of rolling through the ball as you drop and lift and drop and lift. You have three sets like that. Be sure when you're lifting up that the top part of your bridge is staying just as high. It's not starting to droop and get a little bit lower as you go through this. Two, tap, last set. One side and the other side back to those little pulses in the center. Super squeeze that ball. Press the entire foot into the floor. 
teeny tiny lifts at the very top. This is again one of those moves where the smaller you make the move, the more you're going to feel it. So the back of your legs should be pretty warmed up by now. Or maybe they're on fire. One of the two. Three, two, and one. Nice and slow. Lower all the way down. Three, two, and one. Pull your knees into your chest and give your lower back just a little less break right there. Good. So we're going to work on a double leg stretch and then a double leg lower. And the double leg stretch, I want you to start with your head and shoulders staying on the floor. I want you just to stretch those legs out or push those feet away from you and then drag them in. Now, if it's too much thought for you to worry about your feet, don't worry about your feet. But if you feel like you can, feel like you're flexing your feet and pushing your heels out and then pointing your toes and kind of dragging them back in. Now the whole time we've been working on this, pushing the belly button down, pushing the lower back down. So you're gonna have this natural um, arch in your spine. There's this neutral spine where you work. So it doesn't have to touch the floor, but if it's starting to super arch up, you might think about pushing your feet a little higher to the ceiling and press those heels out and drag those toes in. If you would prefer, you can lift your head and shoulders, press both the arms and legs out, and pull them in. Press them out, and pull them in. The whole goal is not to work in a position so low that you start to get this crazy pushing out, and you're pushing those abdominals up. It's really not cute when you force your abdominals to curve outward after about, say, three years old. Press out. Make this your best one because it's your last one. Press it up. Scoop it in. And relax for just a second. Move that ball down to your calves. So now we're going to work on the double leg lower. If you would like to modify and place your hands right here under your hips, that can kind of help with that, how I always talk about making your hips lighter so that your lower back and your abdominals stay heavier down towards the floor. So squeeze the ball and lower just to the point that it gets tight. You don't have to go any further than that. And lift those right back up. So that's your really only goal. You just want the abdominal wall to get super tight and squeeze and lift right back up. And remember, it's not a competition. So whether you're watching me or you're watching some other girl in an exercise class, Great that that person decides to go all the way down to the floor, but that might not be your range of motion, and that's okay. It's not about competing. It's simply about getting healthier as you're working. If you would rather, you can lengthen the arms overhead, lift your head and shoulders, or you might even start to pass that little ball off as you double leg lower, and lift. So remember, as I play with the move and say, well, you could do this or you could do that, you could stay right here and just reach far enough that the abdominals get tight, that you keep the good form and lift right back up because that's what's making you stronger today. Give me two more where we are. And last one. And lift and pull your knees in towards your chest. Good. With those knees rocking side to side, just sort of massage out your lower back for me. Good. Right there on your back, let those knees drop over to one side and pull both arms away from your legs and look away from your legs so you can get a little back and abdominal twist. Do you remember each time that you're working out? Go ahead and switch those knees over to the other side. That it really is just an accomplishment that you decided to turn a video on and to get moving today, or that you decided to go to the gym. So don't give yourself a hard time because you didn't move far enough or lift enough weight or whatever it was. You got moving and that was a super job each time you choose to do that. Good, rolling like a ball so you're kind of massaging your back. You can open and close the legs as much as you would like. Give me about two more. 
and then roll yourself all the way up to a seated position. Good. Right there with your hands on the front of your shins. In a nice, easy seated position, just exhale the air out as you tuck your chin into your chest, really curl your spine towards the back wall. Pull with those arms so you're stretching through the entire back from the shoulder blades all the way down to the low back. And then press your hands into the floor, lift through your chest, kind of press your rib cage forward, little stretch. And release. Deep inhale up. Exhale, imagine you're dragging your hands against the wall behind you. Feel that really nice, tall posture. Great job. I'm so proud of you guys for doing that with me. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you like these shorter little ab series, also put something in the comments. Um, the whole reason that I'm doing a set of shorter ones is because I have gotten a lot of comments that you guys like that. You could fit it in when the kids were distracted or you could fit it in um, on a little break at school or whatever it was. So thank you so much for that and thanks for watching.